In the name of Jesus. Amen. While he looked into those sleepy eyes and let the tiny hand wrap itself around one of his fingers, did Simeon feel like dancing? Did Simeon giggle, perhaps? Did Simeon's smile go from one ear to the next ear? Did he lift up his eyes to heaven when he prayed? Or did he just look into the eyes of the promised Christ as he held him, pondering deeply? When he kissed the child, did his gray beard and his rough lips cause discomfort to the Christ child? Did Simeon take a deep breath, taking all that in, that precious smell of a newborn in? Or did he fall to his knees as he held the babe? And what was in Mary's mind and heart as she noticed this old man, Simeon, making his way through the crowd, perhaps, with outstretched arms to hold that Christ child? Did she recognize in his eyes the same wonder that had filled the eyes of those shepherds 40 days before? Did she realize that Simeon was another one of God's saints who had been let in on the secret that the Messiah had been born? And Joseph, faithful Joseph, standing by and watching, what went on in his mind as he watched Simeon start spreading the word about the child. Now, truth be told, many watched for the coming Messiah during that first century. However, many had their own ideas of what they expected for God's glory and splendor to look like. You see, many expected something greater, something more grand, something more extravagant than a mere babe born in a cave, but not Simeon. You see, Simeon knew who had come to the temple that day. Simeon knew who was before him, and he worshipped the Christ child with awe and reverence. Simeon, he was not put off by the lowliness of Jesus, by the appearance of a babe. But instead, he said these words, hear these words clearly. Simeon said this, Sovereign Lord, As you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. Yes, you may dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. In other words, Simeon stared at the Christ child. Yes, he stared at the Christ child, and he stated that he was, get this, that he was ready to die. Yes, you heard that correctly. He was ready to die because he knew that the Lord had truly kept all of his promises from the Old Testament. All those promises from the days of old were fulfilled right there in that Christ child, in his arms, and so he was ready to die. Simeon knew that he had been given the most precious gift of all, the Messiah, the Christ. And so Simeon, he was set free. He was set free with peace. He was gloriously free for the rest of his earthly days, forever free in the peace of Christ because he held the Messiah in his arms. Peace, it's interesting, is it not? Peace, it does not actually come from the sounds of gentle flowing water over rocks. Peace, it does not come from quiet meditation. Peace, it actually does not come from soothing music, as good as the music may be. Nah, that's all calmness. It's not true peace. Indeed, peace does not come from any of these things, but rather peace, lasting peace, peace that the world cannot give. That kind of peace comes from Christ, receiving Christ. But how does Christ give such peace, peace that the world cannot give? Did Simeon receive peace from Christ because he was cuddling the little baby? Perhaps this little baby Jesus in his arms served as some sort of comfort animal, giving him solace and peace? Did the sight of the baby Christ remind Simeon perhaps of younger years where things were a little less stressful and less pain and less hardship, better years in the past? No, it was none of these things. Instead, Christ was peace to Simeon Get this, because Christ is 
God's salvation. It's that clear. Christ is God's salvation. Now, it's very obvious, if you look around in our culture right now, that there's not much peace. There indeed is not much peace. Instead, it seems as if our culture is driven more often than not by fear and not peace. And my friends, do not be fooled by those who say, you know what, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid. Those who try and convince you that they're not afraid, well, they are typically the ones who are most afraid, or worse yet, selling fear to line their own pocketbooks. But truth be told, truth be told, we really should not blame, we really should not blame everyone else around us too much for this fear. And the reason being, the world lives in much darkness. It does not live by faith, but lives in darkness, which means it lives in fear. And where there is fear, yes, there is no peace. And we Christians, well, we are no better off. We really are not. You see, we often say that we have peace, but in reality, what little peace we do conjure up from our own religious sentiments and our own conjuring up of trying to find peace within or our little endeavors that we do, well, it's typically attacked by the devil and it's ridiculed by the world and dismissed by our old Adam. It's here one moment and gone the next. And this is the reason why. This is the reason why we must learn we must learn to sing the song of Simeon, not only on Sundays, but throughout the whole week. We must learn the essence of what Simeon confessed to us today. But what is this song of Simeon that I speak of? What is it? How do we know it? Do we even know it? My friends, don't worry. You do already know it. And get this, you know it extremely well. Yes, you know it extremely well. You see, you and I sing the song of Simeon every Sunday after we receive, <laughs> after we receive the Lord's Supper. We call the song of Simeon the Nunc Dimittis. Yes, the Nunc Dimittis, Latin, Nunc Dimittis. When we sing the Nunc Dimittis, we're singing the song of Simeon. And we sing it after receiving the Lord's body and blood right here in our hands and upon our lips and tongues and so when we sing the Nunc Dimittis, we're essentially singing with Simeon. We're saying this. Now hear this loud and clear. We're saying this. As we sing that Nunc Dimittis right here in this place at this time, we are singing this and saying this. It's okay, Lord. We have peace. We can die now. And it would be all okay. We're ready to go home, Lord Jesus. We have received salvation. We have touched and we have handled the flesh of Christ. We have touched and eaten love incarnate. It's okay, Lord. We can go home. We can die. Glory to God in the highest. Baptized saints, like Simeon, you hold Jesus in your hands during the Lord's Supper. And as you eat and drink, your fears about death, your agitated minds, your troubled hearts are met. Yes, they're met not with fear, but met with powerful salvation. And mark this, the salvation is not just a theoretical idea or a pious sentiment, but it is real salvation. It is real salvation for you. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it that death is quite terrible and terrifying. And the devil is indeed full of poison and lies, and he attacks. Oh boy, does he attack with flaming arrows at us all the time. And the world is full of trickery. Trickery that plunges us further into darkness. But make no mistake, whoever has Christ has salvation. Because Christ is our salvation. And since Christ is our salvation, you have a defender that is strong that is strong to move you out of death unto life. You have one that is strong to remove sin's condemnation, the condemnation of sin to give you the radiance, righteous favor of God. You have a strong one who takes you out of fear and places and gives you peace. As we heard yesterday in Christmas Day, Christ Jesus, that babe in the manger, has dominion over all things. 
And Simeon, he knew this. Simeon got this. Simeon got to see the Savior. Simeon knew that he was holding salvation in his arms. And so Simeon became unconcerned about when and how death would occur for him. He was ready for it. He was ready at any moment. He had Christ. He beheld salvation. He was ready to be dismissed from this life unto death and unto paradise and peace. And like Simeon, you too have salvation. You too have peace that chases away fear. And that is why, that is why we stand and sing the Nunc Dimittis after receiving communion. It is why we can sing the Song of Simeon as often as we want or need. My friends, come hell or high water, as a Christian, you can sing the Song of Simeon and you can confess boldly and comfortably and with peace. We can confess this. It's okay, Lord. It's okay, Lord. I have peace because I have you. If today is my day to die, it will be okay. It's going to be okay. I'm ready to go home at any time, at any place, in any way, because I have you, and you have me, and you are my salvation. Glory to God in the highest. Baptized saints, in this life there will be indeed black clouds of fear, of pain and suffering. But in Christ there are no black clouds and no fear. For Christ is your salvation, Christ is your peace. And as your salvation, Christ went for sin and death's jugular by taking on the human condition and, yes, dying for sin and rising from the grave to defeat death for you. And so... We can sing, we can confess with Simeon, we can confess, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you, have, you may now, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. In the name of Jesus.